我是一个比较算是比较害羞的人，那我就开始只有气球，那只有出兴趣来，认识了更多的朋友。I'm writing a paper on disrupted identity. Simply put, it's when an ordered and predictable life gets thrown into chaos through, quite frankly, anything. <laughs> that spirit animal is definitely a bear. But a hibernating bear. Like a bear that's just lazy and just wants to chill and eat and... Play video games. Yeah, play video games. I'm算是比較害羞的人。那本來我自己念完研究所就想說從事歷史的相關的工作,但我覺得說人生如果一直這樣子是太無聊了。然後後來因為做這一行你接觸了小朋友你可能要帶領他做活動你可能要一次面對一大群人這樣一次一次下來以後我發現這件事情沒有那麼討厭相反的孩子都會開心開大哇所以你是專業折氣球對我有在那個L
Disrupted identity is like, it's like if everyone's a ball of clay, then the disruptions are like the bumps and depressions that mold us different from other clay balls. Simply put, it's when an ordered and predictable life gets thrown into chaos through, quite frankly, anything. On a micro scale, we can talk about that mid laner who DC throwing your game. That's a disruption in the game itself. The disruption I'm looking for lies within the lives and the identity of others. I recorded audio with people to see if League had an impact. My thesis is about their answers, but it's kind of about me. I did dozens of interviews and heard all sorts of stories. I started almost all of them the same way. Well, first, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Grace. I'm five, two and a half, two and a half inches, yes. <laughs> Uh, I have dark brown eyes and dark brown hair. Almost everyone starts off talking about what they are. So, if I describe myself that way... Um, you're wearing a plaid shirt. I'm white. You have, like, short, blondish hair. Reddish brown hair. You're very, like, color matching today. I'd like to say I'm funny too, but who knows? <laughs> I am a very over-the-top, extroverted, tall person. Physically, I am pretty short, so I'm like 5'6", and like 130 pounds, 130 pounds, pretty, just slim. Using these normative shorthands, I'm white, I'm straight, I'm funny, can make us more susceptible to disruptions, because we don't anticipate something chaotic happening. It's like when you're a support main, you identify as support, you expect to pretty much always get support, but then new champs like throws you into mid, when I'm listening to their stories, I'm also making sense of them. Metaphors help me understand what I'm hearing. They help me shape it into part of my own thesis. Once we go beyond the basics, the physical stuff, they share more about the deeper parts of their identity, even revealing the disruptions helping shape it. I spoke with Grace. Being a girl online comes with certain disruptions. Although, like, I'm comfortable with, like, revealing my pictures online or like saying I'm a girl. If I say like I'm a girl every time, like I might attract like attention that I don't want. Being a girl has an impact on how other gamers identify Grace, how Grace identifies herself and even behaves. To say that these disruptions, the things that make us feel different, don't impact our identity is naive. Yep, mm -hmm. I have a visual disability. Uh -huh. um, it's not your typical visual disability. I see, I have double vision. When Aaron was 12 years old, he was diagnosed with brain cancer on his optic nerve. I am 26 now. 26? Yeah, I've lived over half my life with double vision. I mean, that's, it's who I am. I'll never not see double and I'm okay with that. As the people I interview become more comfortable, we talk more about how League impacts their identities like how they can be themselves without feeling disrupted. Do you think that being a girl matters when you're playing League of Legends? No, I don't think so. <laughs> because gender, like, really doesn't matter. It's just, like, your ability to do well. Like, that's not, like, a gender-specific thing. And I feel like people, like, forget about who they are, like, physically, and just they become their character in game. I say for me, people like me who aren't really that social, it's great. Like some of these people that have never met me probably could tell you more about me than the people that are seeing me face to face every day of my life. <laughs> I wonder sometimes what it means that my friends online know so much more about me than my own family. As I listen to these interviews, I stumble across my talk with Sky. I'd hoped he would talk about his own disrupted identity but we ended up talking about champion fan fiction instead. It was really the voice that made me feel that he might be a homosexual. I have a quick question for you. Do I sound gay? No, you don't sound gay. You sound like somebody who has a pantry, who has gravy with their Thanksgiving dinner. You sound very white, and that's okay, but not gay. Yeah, okay, but I am gay, and... Are I... you? Oh, by the way, I'm gay. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> but only when it doesn't hurt me to be.
I'm listening for everybody's stories, but really, I'm looking for people like me, finding themselves on the internet. League of Legends was a space where I could be anything, and unlike my offline life, I just decided to be me. Some stories will have happy endings, right? I'm an open book, I have nothing to hide, because I feel like my story in general is a, is a really good story because, I mean, like I was 12 years old and I, I beat cancer. <laughs> it told you it changed who I was. I was a jerk, I was a bully, and heard being too giant softy. I really enjoy uh, making sure people are, are happy. Words are really difficult right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> The massive disruption of the cancer on Aaron's identity changed him in a meaningful way, changed how he saw the world. When it comes to my own disrupted identity, I'm learning more even as I'm listening to the other stories. And it's hard. So, I'm gay, like I said. Most people that know me know. Everyone online knows. But uh, my parents don't know. Oh, man. You look really worried about that. I'm pretty worried about it. Are you getting emotional? I'm always it? emotional. Yeah. Through these interviews, this journey, I've come to realize I need to find a way to mediate my own disruptions. No matter what, you should know, League of Legends community, me, everyone, all these gamers, we have your back. Like, that's who we are, you know? It's really comforting. Genuinely. Mm -hmm. Right now, my identity is an online identity, a League identity, where it isn't a disruption. So who am I? It's not what I am or what I was supposed to be, but what my experiences have been, who I am online and hopefully offline. The thing about Matt is that... The best part about Matt is like, I don't know how to explain it. I guess we're best friends. I'd consider Matt a best friend. Like, literally best friends. Matt's spirit animal is definitely a bear. But a hibernating bear. Not not like an active bear. like A koala bear. <laughs> that's what it is. I think a panda bear would be more fit because it's bigger. That's true. Yeah, let's do panda bear. Like a bear that's just lazy and just wants to chill and eat and... Play video games. Yeah, play video games. He's had the same computer for like, I don't know, 200 years. It would overheat and then just give up. No, it would make like a weird, creepy noise. You remember? Uh, yeah. And then it'd kill. It got worse and worse to a point where he was like, when a team fight happened, his FPS would go to like two. Be like, oh boy, here comes the slideshow. He'd be like, all right, I'm gonna do the combo. And he would say, like, I'm gonna do the combo like I can actually see what's going on. So he'd be like, WQR. <laughs> Did I hit it? Did I hit it? <laughs> Did I hit it? <laughs> <laughs> It got to a point, he was like, I can't play League with you, Chris. Like, we're just gonna lose, I'm not gonna be able to do anything. Like, I don't wanna bring your LP down. I can't even play Hearthstone. The FPS was so bad on that laptop that he couldn't even play Hearthstone at the, like, the lowest graphics settings. Like, it was so bad. I don't think it ever actually stopped us from playing with him. The only thing that stopped us from playing was when he would get off. Because it would be like, hey, Matt, play with us. He's like, you know, you don't understand. My computer will not even open the client. And I'm like, I don't care. And he's like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> The reason why, like, we wanted him to play with us was because, like, we had just missed playing League with him. We missed his presence. He got left behind, computer-wise, like, because he just didn't have the money to buy one. I was like, okay, I gotta do something about this. I was like, I'm gonna get him a graphics card or something for his birthday. And then I told Esteban. And Esteban was like, well, why don't we just all do that? Why don't we just get him the whole thing? Like, why don't we just ask everybody to pitch in and just get him the whole computer? Esteban brought all the parts to my house. I built it. And then the next day, they were like, we're going to come by at this time, make sure it's ready. Matt's birthday. The day of his birthday, the computer was at Mason's house. So that day was kind of a mess, because of course, we were Matt the entire time. So we had to figure out, how are we going to get away from Matt to drive to his house to set up the computer and then meet him at the restaurant. The hard part was getting him away. Yeah, and we're like, oh yeah, we're gonna go pick up Mason. Matt was like, Why do, can I come with you? I was like, no, 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 you, you need to go get the table. We picked up Mason, got the computer, and drove to Matt's house. And the entire time, he was like, you know, where are you guys? What's going on? Bro, where are you at? 
Where are you? I told him that Mason was in a ranked game. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, oh, we had to, we have to wait for Mason to finish his game. We had to completely set up the entire computer. Like it needed to be ready to go. So we had to set everything up. We were like, okay, we gotta go. After the restaurant, we we all went back to his house. And like he got in my car and everybody's like, okay, okay, we'll see you at Matt's house. We'll see you at my house. And he's just like, why is everybody coming? We got there at the same time. He pulls out his phone and Matt's like, why are you filming this? And then we're like, just go in there. And we're like, open the door and like kind of shove him in. Shove him in, shove him in, shove him in, get in there. What is that? What is this? What does it look like, motherfucker? Is that you mean a computer? Dude, yeah. I'm so crying, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Is this you? Who did this? This is all, all of us. All of us. All of us. I'm not going to lie, I got a little choked up when I saw Matt crying. <laughs> it's like a big grizzly bear breaking down in front of me. Koala bear. Koala bear. <laughs> picking panda, right? Are you picking panda? Yeah, yeah it's koala. a panda. No, no, it's a panda. It's a panda. Dude, we love you, Matt. Dude, come, come here. here. Matt, come here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Dude, we fucking love you so much. Come on, go turn it on. I want to see you go turn it on. Yeah, go turn it on, man.